Hi there, I'm Katie Rose and welcome to The Rooted Reinvention, a podcast exploring the real world journey of reinventing who we are without burning out or burning our whole life down. I teach people how to make lasting change by melding my Masters in Neuroscience and my Cognitive Therapy qualification with common self-help tools, spiritual concepts and my personal experience because being yourself doesn't need to feel so damn hard. To get more information on podcast episodes, please visit rootedreinvention.com forward slash podcast. As I've got older, I have begun to recognise just how many people are driven by a sense of achievement. And I say this being trained in low intensity cognitive behavioural therapy tools where the most common evidence based treatment for low mood and low motivation essentially gets people to focus on the small achievements in their day. As a somewhat perfectionist who grew up in an environment where academic and kind of on paper achievements were highly valued. Although I explored this kind of idea of focusing on achievements to give myself a sense of kind of rebuilding that confidence and kind of slowly building up my energy, which are things which are evidence based and I'm not here to debate the science or or what does and doesn't work for people. But for me, it also reinforced that sense of needing to achieve. Now, those of you who have been listening before know that I have a life coach. And one of the things that she has advised me to do is to look at exploring, and we've gone through different words, but delight, play, joy, fun. For me, it's that lightness. It's that kind of, it is, I've, I've been using delight because it, it is essentially a reminder of what feels light, what makes me feel lighter. So I've been trying to do a bit more gaming, I've been reading more fiction, I've been writing more fiction, Um, I've been doing a lot of resting since um, in the transition between my two day jobs, and I've definitely sort of, I guess I found something, and although it's not academic and it's not very easy for me to put it into particularly clear words, it's something that I want to share because I know that I am not the only person on this earth who has struggled with something, tried the correct way of doing it, and I'm using air quotes for that, Um, you know, the evidence base, the proper, the recommended thing, and found that it doesn't work for them. And this is exactly why I started Rooted Reinvention to begin with, because actually if we were just able to understand ourselves and to use the tools that are brain naturally does without all of the shoulds and musts and cultural advice then we would in my opinion be better off in terms of finding what works for us and then doing that instead okay ran over thank you for coming to my TED talk um but essentially one of the things that I've been doing is I actually signed up for a two-week free trial of Skillshare This is not sponsored. I do have a code down in the description or show notes if you want to try it for two weeks yourself for free. And I will get a little bit of, I think I'll get a credit or something for that. But for me, what was interesting about Skillshare is it's a learning platform. So it's got lots of online courses. A lot of them are under an hour, which I have to say I really love. So a lot of them are a set of 10 videos that are each five minutes long, which I've really found has meant that I've actually been able to stick with it and learn things. So I have to say that being a lifelong learner who's always trying to learn the next thing and always trying to make sure I'm not missing out on a piece of knowledge or a piece of information that could help me, knowing that actually Skillshare has things where I can watch a four-minute video and then go back to something else and mull on it and then go back for the second set, which is another five-minute video, that has really been helpful. But the main thing that I have learned from it is it is not... A learning platform for anything and everything. So compared to a lot of other learning platforms where I've like looked through hundreds of courses and tried to work out which ones I want to pick, although I did look through some of the lifestyle, the productivity, the things that I 
always gravitate towards. It recommended a doodling class for me that was only 25 minutes of the whole thing. And I've now watched about four hours of how to doodle classes, which is not something I'd have ever picked, like a thought of. And it just feels like a bit of an easy way in. Art is not something that I associate with myself anymore. It was at least some part of my identity as I was growing up. It was something that I would always do. And these days I do creative writing instead. And I'm quite happy with that. But I have completed multiple hours worth of doodling lessons in the last two weeks. And although I wouldn't say that I've made any doodles that I'm particularly happy with yet, I did find delight. I found joy. I found giving myself 25 minutes, or I think I gave myself the first two videos, which was three minutes and one and a half minutes, actually, but because they're split up. Giving myself that little bit of time to do something that will literally lead to nothing of any grand on paper achievement according to kind of what my parents would say or society would say. If I told my mother that I had just spent an hour learning to doodle on a post-it note, she'd have said, oh, did you not have anything else to do? Was there nothing on TV? Did you not want to write your book and get published and et cetera, et cetera? Um, did you not? <laughs> and she certainly wouldn't like it if I said I was doing it because I was procrastinating doing the vacuum cleaning, which is also true. But I found that actually I could just learn something. And I wasn't trying to apply it to my business and I wasn't trying to apply it to my writing and I wasn't thinking about how am I going to take this into publication and how am I going to get this out there and how am I going to make sure that this meets this criteria so that I can publish it. It was just, I'm going to spend 25 minutes this week learning to doodle. It then recommended a basic drawing uh, video for me, which was a couple more hours and it did take me the couple of weeks to actually get through the whole thing. I don't know if it's because I'm me and I do this whole lifelong learning and drawing connections together, but there are two things that I didn't know that I've learned from Skillshare and it hasn't been because I've been trying to learn. And I think that's something particularly when we are so achievement focused and so hard on ourselves almost about how we spend our time and what we're doing and what we're accomplishing with our life. I spent multiple hours in the last couple of weeks watching art classes and not doing any art. I wasn't drawing alongside. I just watched and listened and just let myself enjoy someone someone colouring in their picture that they'd done. And it was just so interesting to make that connection for myself about actually this is delightful like I don't like colouring in myself and like adult colouring books and stuff aren't for me partly because I if I go over the line then I start I can feel the like perfectionist achievement there's no point to this kind of sensation I can feel it pulling at me watching someone else colour in was surprisingly relaxing for me and I'm kind of at the point where I don't have a great deal to say about this exploration of delight or joy or fun or whatever word you want to use with that natural. I mean, it is that nature. It's that core nature underneath all of the expectations and the conditioning that we are given as human beings. It's the being that we are underneath. You know, if you watch a child crouch to look in a puddle. They don't need to learn how to crouch in such a way that keeps their back straight and bends at their knees. They're, they just do it. It's natural within us and we lose the ability of how to, to use our body and to, to follow those instincts as we get older. And I think what I've really been exploring those last few months is kind of regaining that. So my word for 2021 is wild. And for me, it's about cultivating that natural spark inside me that's underneath the focus on achievement even the focus on academia so this is my way of going about it if I just sat down and with a pen and paper a I wouldn't have learned anything and b I'd have got frustrated but telling myself oh this is a this is a learning platform this is a class you know I there's this is something on a on a paid platform so it's going to be decent I'm going to definitely learn something from this it'll be good for my well-being it'll be 
good to help me as a rounded person. Perhaps one day I can get particularly good at drawing a particular thing and then I could put it up in a store or show people or put it on birthday cards or something. So I went into this already having a list of how I could make this achievement based. And then when I got there, very much was follow the the lightness, follow delight, look for it. And I was like, 20 minutes on doodling. That that seems pretty easy, pretty fun, pretty simple. I did used to like doodling when I was in school. Um, I definitely do a few doodles at the moment, or well, certainly before lockdown, I was doing lots of doodles when I was at meetings and things like that. It's my natural kind of response. Although I do draw the same four things. So if you ever need me to draw a spider web, a 3D cube, a tree, or a butterfly, you'll notice that any doodle I've ever done in the last 10 years <laughs> pretty much has those four things and nothing else. So the idea of learning a couple of new doodles I could do just felt it felt fun, but it felt like, oh, well, it'll put some variety in my life. It's a creative thing, and I want to be more creative this year. And there was just a pull. I saw the little thumbnail, and it said doodling. It was under half an hour, and I thought, why not? And even thinking back to a year ago, I wouldn't have even asked myself why not, because I'd have had a list of 20 reasons why not. So I think today I just wanted to kind of highlight that idea about achievement, irrespective of your day job or your lack of day job, or if you are working on a creative project that you're looking for publication or trying to get into a gallery or even just showcasing to friends or you're making something to be sold. Where are you able to? explore delight and that natural wild beingness <laughs> that just natural energy of being human and exploring things without it tying specifically to a sense of achievement or a sense of progress in your life and again if you need to do the same as me and kind of be like oh well I'll go on this particular website that does courses or I'll Google like courses of this in order to kind of feel like you're learning, feel like something might be useful, um, then, you know, start there a hundred percent. But then when you get there, like listen for that little pull, feel for that little pull, that little tug of, hey, that looks, that looks good. Especially if you can't immediately come up with a well how will this benefit me kind of answer because that's probably something that's your spark sort of those embers are flickering and if there's anything I've learned in my years of trying to understand self-development and well-being and human potential and capability it's follow that spark at least listen to it and see hear what it has to say. So I'll leave that link for Skillshare down below. As I say, it doesn't, it won't cost you anything for two weeks. If you do sign up after that, it won't cost you any more going through my link than going through the main site. And I have a feeling I do gain something from it. So if you want to support me and apparently my doodling skills, then <laughs> feel free to use my link if it sounds like the right thing for you. If you are similar if you are someone who is fairly achievement based if you are somewhat perfectionist perhaps then my challenge to you is to find three things that delight you every day for the next week and I have to give credit to my life coach Tiffany Hahn because that's what she's asked me to do and that's why I'm now asking you to do it so I will put her details down below as well um, but it's literally finding three things that delight you so for example something that delighted me yesterday was that I had cheese on toast for the first time in months that was my lunch and that was my delight and that counts I think that's the other thing um I started reading a book two days ago and really enjoying it that was a portion of delight um <laughs> 
My cats chased each other and one of them fell off the table. That was a moment of delight. He is fine. He is fluffy and bouncy and the table is not high. It's a coffee table. But that was one of my moments of delight was that I, my husband and I both watched and we laughed and laughed and obviously checked he was all right and then laughed some more. Another moment of delight for me was that when I picked up fresh fruit and veg from the supermarkets, because we're in lockdown here in England, I picked up some nail varnish because I can't remember the last time I wasn't fighting for the dregs at the bottom of the nail varnish. And part of my kind of identity, my little battle armor costume when I'm having a bad day is to put nail varnish on. That's one of the things that I know helps me feel like myself and connect to my my inner wild is to to wear nail varnish. Um, so there's a couple of examples. If you want to tell me what your uh, three daily delights are, please do. But what I would most like to know is just if you try this challenge for a week, how does it feel? Like, do you notice more delight? Do you notice how hard it is to find things? Do you notice that you really resented having to do it some days? Like, all of that is information that can help us find what works for us. Because in the end, that's the whole point, isn't it? Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful week. And I will speak to you again next Tuesday. Bye. Thanks for listening, and as always, you can find out more at rootedreinvention.com. Take care, remember, you are more capable than you often realise, and I'll see you next time. Bye!